All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Up and In Show. We are here at Cards and Culture on the Purple Couch, and I'm with my guy, Brad Wing. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Thanks yeah. for having me. This is a long time coming. I've been trying to get you on this Purple Couch for like a year and a half. You've been coming, supporting the business. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. I want to say last time I was on here, what, like four years a ago? Long, maybe? Yeah, and that was like, Three, that was pre-COVID. Ago? Yeah. Probably 2019, 2000. You were still down yeah. at the studio. I was still there? at uh, yeah. Guarantee Media, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a it's been a long time. A lot of changes since then. Um, you know, both our careers and things have moved, and I didn't even have this when we first did that. No, you did. I, I didn't, didn't think even this have is cards like and a, culture. An idea. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to even think if I had F45 at that point. I probably had F45. I think and you're stuff. just getting yeah, into just it, getting into honest, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, our journey has you know uh, been ups and downs and things like that. So I'm excited to catch up with you. You've been a real inspiration for me from from a distance and um, up close person. I know I sent you a text. You know, the first day um that you you know made your comeback with the xfl but i think it would yeah. be pretty cool to kind of let some of our listeners know your journey what you've been up to the last couple of years and that kind of stuff yeah it was, it was cool that we did that draft thing here as well that that's always going to be something cool to look back at and um, yeah, that's right we got that that would be cool to mix in here to yeah. the content yeah um yeah so man i guess long story short it was about a year ago roughly i'm just going through my phone and um i really had no like aspirations for football man like you got to believe me that whole part of my life was done like there was a long time where I thought football's over with like yeah. that chapter's done with and then you know I'm scrolling on Instagram about a year ago and I see um the XFL's doing like all these showcases and yeah. they have a specialist showcase out in San Diego sign up for it I knew the guy that was running it Nick Novak um so I just like signed up for it kind yeah. of you know yeah. not really like thinking whatever. about it and then um I remember when you told me it was yeah. kind of just like yeah, like, I was like, yeah I'm, I'm just going it. out to yeah. it and there was really I didn't know what was going to come of it It was just kind of go out to San Diego kind of like a combine deal yeah. so anyway I went and did that um did pretty good um and then yeah you know was lucky enough to get picked up by San Antonio which is funny because I don't even know if I said this to you I know Bentley's heard me say it but when I signed up for just that showcase thing, I think that was right around the time that they had released like the coaches and the cities for the XFL yeah, yeah, um, yeah. relaunch in 2023. So I saw like Heinz Ward at San Antonio um, and a couple other like steerless people over there. I was like, that'd be cool. And they got a dome, which, yeah. you know, for my job, that is yeah, that's nice. ideal. <laughs> um, and it did. It worked out. It worked out like, you know perfect yeah almost um so that was cool man um got to go down there january of this year um and spent four months there you know and like i said football being over for me was was just was a reality that i lived for so long and so to be able able to be back into it you know the the teammates the locker room kind of stuff had my son down there exactly. you know the, these cool. were the things that like that I missed or that I was upset I didn't get the opportunity to do especially with Bentley you know he was like four or five years old when I was in New York and he yeah. came to games and stuff and yeah. he remembers bits and pieces of it but now experiencing it at 10 years old you know he was riding the bus with us he I was see, like he was eating meals with us yeah. um I saw coach, the videos he was on the field and everything too bro, right? so Doing stuff. you know Heinz shout out to coach man Heinz Ward he was really good um in that respect he let Bentley come on the sideline for a whole game man. Know, and I you know coaches really don't you know, game day, it's like, it's, it's, it's wartime. Business, yeah, 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 like yeah. you don't mess with nobody. They barely even talk to their wife, and kids, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, um, the fact that he let Bentley be on the sideline for the whole game, it was, it was an experience, you know, we're going to be able yeah. to look back on forever. It was awesome, man. So yeah, back, back in football, man, it's, um, it's, it's yeah. awesome. I'm it's just a dream, super I would imagine, right? Yeah. yeah. Talk to us a little bit, give a, give a little background of your NFL history and, and kind of some context of why Heinz, you know, was, so instrumental and in, and why Pittsburgh and all that stuff means something to you too. Yeah. Well, Pittsburgh was, you know, well, I started off with the Eagles um, and then got released for there and then got picked up by the Steelers. And, the, and I, you know, the Steelers is my first team, right. really, even though they, I gave, you the first first, chance, they yeah. gave me my first real chance. Coach Tomlin, you know, gave me that opportunity. Um, so I'm, I always feel indebted to those guys and, and I'm still in contact with those guys and, and tell them that all the time. Um, the cool thing was with Hines was, he'd played in Pittsburgh and only Pittsburgh. So yep. he only knew Pittsburgh. Exactly. Um, and so he created, he created that culture that Pittsburgh had, which is, you know, tight family work super hard. Um, and he, he did a good job of that, of, of bringing that kind of atmosphere to a new program in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was, it was cool seeing like some familiar faces there. Um, you know, obviously I was only in Pittsburgh for one year and then I went to New York for four years. Um, so that's kind of where my home was in the NFL. Um, and the cool thing about the XFL, it was made up with a bunch of guys I had kind of crossed paths with along the way. So you'd seen some guys that you'd maybe played with up at the NFL or played against in college and, and they're trying to, you know, 
come back we we, yeah. we all have our own things that we've right, been dealing right. with and um and that was the cool thing about the xfl a lot of people you really relate to a lot of people maybe you're not going through the exact same thing right but um a lot of people there are dealing with stuff and, and trying to overcome some right. issues and and really just trying to leave it all out on the field which is cool yeah and i'd imagine too and i don't know this but i talked to you a little bit about it but being the older guy you said they named you captain and stuff yeah. like that you kind of have your your own journey and the things you've been through um, talk to me a little bit about what that journey was like for you, but then the things that you've learned that you were able to kind of be like the leader on that team now, you know? It was, yeah, it was weird, man. I'm like, I don't know. Like, they come, <laughs> You're like, you're looking to me. Yeah, they're I'm asking like, me. I'm like, I don't know. You want me to tell you what I would do? Um, <laughs> you don't nah, want me to tell you what, what I would I did? do. Yeah. yeah, what I did. Um, but yeah, nah, that was cool, man. But yeah, it was, it was strange because, you know, it was like five years since I hadn't played yeah. football. Yeah. Um, and that time went relatively quick for me. And so getting back in and yeah, the guys voting me captain, it was cool, man. And then, um, yeah, but it was a different kind of role that I was in. You know, I was kind of always the younger guy when yeah. I was playing and, and always, you know, just tagging along, right. having fun. Looking doing up whatever. to yeah, people yeah, and shit, right. like, or then, like um, watching what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, of course. And then, you know, you get you get on the other side of that and, yeah. and guys come to you for help. And then, you know, they, they know my story a little bit well. So I think it was the first week I was in there. I went and spoke to Hines just one on one. Yeah. Um. I just I just wanted him to know you know where I'm coming from. I know he knew he knew a little bit about me, but I wanted him to really understand you know and and hear it from me. Yeah. So I went in one day and kind of told him about what I'd been dealing with the since I got out of the NFL. Um, told him about you know going to treatment, sobriety, um, and after like. You know, we were probably talking for an hour. After an hour, he's like, I need you to tell everything you just told me to the team. I love I that. Like, yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a lot, it was hard. You know, I yeah, don't like was, talking about yeah. that stuff, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it's my truth, you know. And I knew I knew that if I did that with the team and the coaches and stuff, like, it would just be a big weight off of my back. You yeah. know, like, it, yeah. not not in the respect that you're hiding anything, but now, like, everyone knows my deal. Everyone yep. knows what I'm going through. Yep. And, it, and I need that. You yeah. know what I mean? So I did. I got up there at the team meeting. I'm like, damn. He's like, I got someone, you know, wants to address the team. And yeah, I yeah. get up there and um, it went good, man. It was received well. And from that day onwards, I felt like they were my family. You know, I felt like these guys were, yeah. you know, I could go to them for anything. They'd see me one day, you know, I'd have I'd have a average day at, right, at right, practice right. and I'd be walking around. Coach yeah. would come up to me and, and just give me like a little yeah. two or three sentences that lets me know, like, man, the, these dudes are like, they got my back. Yeah. So that was cool, man. I hadn't yeah. really had that um, in football before. I'm um, just being so open with everybody. Yeah. I mean, it was it's such a masculine, powerful sport too for a dude to be up there and be vulnerable and be like, yo, this is what I went through. And yeah. This is where I'm at. Yeah. I and think you kind of see maybe a, a shift in that because yeah, you're yeah. right, man. I mean, for the longest, and it still goes on like for right. the longest, like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Like you just suck it up, yeah. toughen up. And that works till it doesn't. And right. then when it doesn't work, you, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, football, like you said, it's one of those sports where everyone's just like, you're just sweeping under the rug, man. Exactly. You're good to go. And that's not the case, man. A lot of these dudes are hurting. A lot of these dudes are dealing with stuff. Um, and it just, it, it makes logical sense. You're going to perform at your best, whether you're an athlete or not, when you're the best with yourself. Yeah, you know absolutely. What I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was you know, cool helping guys out with that. There was, you know, a uh, couple questions of guys, you know, younger guys where yeah. you can kind of see the wheels spinning. And, um, yeah, man, it was, it was just cool to be of service to dudes for sure. Yeah. I, what's your like process on that when you can see, see the wheel spin and you can see kind of like that you're making an impact on somebody, but maybe they're not ready yet. Right. Cause that's got, they have to be ready to be able to, right. learn, to make the change. Yeah, man. It's the toughest thing because like, I mean, you know, through college and the NFL, I, I had all the advice given to me. Yeah. I just didn't take it. Exactly. Didn't yeah. We, we, you know we thought I mean? we knew like, better. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. yeah. You think you know better and then you're like, well, you know, like, it'll work out different for me because up until that point, that's everything has worked out yeah, different yeah, for yeah. you compared to the majority of people. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that's an interesting point right there too. That's what it is. You think too. it yeah, is. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, like, Oh, you know, I've, I've made it this far. Right. I did this and that. Yeah. And you do, you kind of think your, right. your ego gets it. inflated yeah, exactly, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but you know, the big thing with that and, and especially talking about sobriety and stuff like that, I've had to learn um, that all I am is just like a giver of information, right. you know, Let's just say, experiences. yeah, whether it's you or someone else or, or whoever it is, like the information I give you, what you do with that, I have nothing Correct. to do with. And that's right. kind of a tough one to swallow, man, because you want to be able to help people. Right. You want to be able to do this. But then again, I look at myself in the mirror. No one could help me. You know, I was given yeah. all the information. It it took until, like you said, I yeah. was ready to where I'm like, all right, let's let's do this work. Yeah. Let's let's actually listen to people yep. um, and see where it gets me. And man, I, you know, I'm a testament to it the the work works you yeah, know what bro, i mean like the fact i'm sitting here on this couch is 
is a miracle talking to you. And um, that's just why, you know, I'm so grateful for, for every single day. You know, even the XFL, I'm bouncing out of bed. You know, some guys are like, oh, it's the XFL. I'm trying to get back to the end. It's funny, Bentley was telling me the other day, he, he went back to school and some kid was making fun of him. Oh, your dad got downgraded to the XFL. Yeah. <laughs> so oh my like, God. You're like, bro. But in my head, you know, I'm like, dude, it's, I love it, bro. Yeah. Like, I thought for real, football was done for me. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what level I'm playing at. Like, the, the motivation for me coming back wasn't to get back to the NFL. You know, a lot of guys in the XFL are playing to get back right, into right, the right. NFL. While... If someone calls, yeah, I'll be on the next flight. Right, right, of course, right. I'm not right. turning that down. But the the motivation for me really to go back and play was to finish it right. You know, like end it, end it. Because I didn't want to talk about football to people. You know, the way it ended, I, I yeah. really didn't enjoy talking to people about that. And we live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, bro. That's all they want to talk and about. And 95% of people know That's me it. from football. And when we talk, we're not talking about anything else, <laughs> anything else you know. Yeah. Um, so it was a weird dynamic. Like I really didn't want to talk about any accomplishments I'd had. And, and, you know, now looking back, that sucks, man. I, you know, know. football has been good for me. It's, yep. um, it's been a sport that's changed my life. So the big motivating key for me was just going back and whether I just play for one year in the XFL, just yeah. go and do it right. Like, yeah. don't just do everything you say you're going to do, you know, be, was- be a leader, um, hard work don't lie don't cheat don't don't do any of that sneaking around just go there and and do what you can do and i did man and it was it was awesome you know i I left there with like i left there feeling like i i set out what i wanted to do you know i had no like i said no aspirations i just wanted to go there and do the right thing whether we won every game lost every game whether i punted like crap whether i punted great i just wanted to go there and it's kind of like I owed it to the game of football. Yeah. You know what I mean? It done yeah. a lot for me and I never really respected it how I yeah. should have. I love that. Um, and so I was like, let me just go and do right by the game of football. And, and I feel like I did that this year, man. And, and, you know, then you go to the performance side of things. I did well, like yeah, I had fun. It's funny how it that was, goes, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Man. I was out there hand, just right? having a ball. Yeah. Like I had more fun last year playing football, I think than I ever have. Exactly. And ever. That- and to me, that's what it's about. It's your personal journey, right? Like that's what you've learned. And when we were younger, you had all these ideas, ideologies about right. how it was going to go. Right. And yeah. now it's just, this is your reality. And like, it's almost like you're grateful every day just to have the chance. Right. That's day. why I say all the time, if I ever had the chance to throw a baseball again, I don't care if it's winter league in Puerto Rico, Dominican, I don't care. Mexico, I'll just have fun. It would be fun to be right. on that bus again. All the things that I thought were a chore that I was like, oh, this I shouldn't be doubling up with somebody. You right, know? Right, right. I'd be like, yeah. I want to double up. I'll triple up. I yeah. don't care. You nah, know what I'm is, saying? Man. Like, it's those go. little things. Yeah, even having a little annoying as exactly. roommate. The yeah, snort, exactly. like All those little things. Yeah. You're like, damn, I do miss that stuff, man. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and it's cool probably for you to see the different perspective now to be like, man, that probably would have annoyed me when I was 26 years old. Oh, or for something sure. Like that. Bro, like, the yeah. craziest thing is like, and again, I'd heard older players tell me this and you just don't listen to them but the crazy <laughs> thing is like seeing younger dudes do similar yes. things that you're doing yes. and you're like oh, man <laughs> and you can't say move. shit yeah. nah, you're you just try, like, but it's like, like bro, you gotta go through it yeah like, you just and, gotta go and really that's that's what i've landed on bro like i said like you can just like give people the information right and, yeah. that, and that's what happened with me i've been given information the whole time it that's wasn't it. until i was ready to receive that information yep. Till it actually starts like getting through and making it making a change. Hundred percent. That's the same thing that I'm living in my life. The second journey with entrepreneurship versus yeah. baseball and stuff. So, um, just hearing this stuff though is so inspiring, and that's why I was like, I love having you around the shop, man. It's been how, how long have you been sober now? What's On your Monday, journey? it was a year and a half. That's fucking yeah. awesome, bro. So December fifth. I, rem- was- I remember when you came to my crib over yeah. at. Uh, village you know willow grove or whatever and you told me like you were about I to start I, this journey i think i was maybe like two or three weeks in at that yeah, point yeah. i was still in treatment i remember um, like 20 30 day days yep. yeah man yeah it's crazy bro like I'm i said happy it's, it's you, a man. miracle um that's awesome yeah the fact that i'm sitting here bro it's it's crazy man and so talk to me let's let's talk a little bit about the xfl specifically now so obviously it was an outlet for you it was an opportunity but talk to me about the quality of football talk to me about yeah. the changes and maybe so when I see the XFL from a business perspective, I'm like, is this an opportunity? Are they changing the game? Talk to me about like the changes and you being involved in it now. Yeah. 
First of all, they changed a lot of rules. I know. And a lot of them are to screw the punters. Really? Yeah. Why? More so than anyone. They're trying to get you guys out of the game? Uh, no, I think they want returns because they're exciting. Ah, that's true. You know? okay, that so um, a couple <laughs> of the, the biggest rule change for me was no one else will care, but um, you can't punt out of bounds inside the 35 yard line. Mm. So it used to be like you punt a ball out of bounds at the one yard line, bro. You're like, that's where they get you're it. the man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now it's like you're getting cussed out on the bench by the coach. Yeah. So if you kick it out of bounds at the one yard line, they get the ball at the 35. So that used to be a skill set to be like, yo, I'd kick it out in the two yard line every time if I yeah. wanted to. Now it's like Oof. you can't even play with them sidelines. Mm. Um, another one is a touchback on punts. Yeah. It used to be ball come out to the 20 or 25 in mm -hmm. Colorado. Now it's the 35 in the XFL. So again, they really, they want punt returns. They want kickoff returns. Kickoff too is gotcha. the, probably, kickoff's probably the craziest, most different um, play as far as the rule changes. Um, so basically, instead of having the kickoff team back with the kicker, yeah. I think the kickoff team's on like the 35 yard right. line or the kickoff. Yeah, the kickoff team's on the 35 yard line and then the return team's on the 25 yard line. So you got 10 dudes yeah. lined up 10 yards away from each other. Right. You got the kicker back here and then you got the returner down there. And the kicker kicks it. No one's allowed to move until the returner catches the ball. Oh, wow. And then it's just like, and then they go, just block, like they're just trying to create. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't even know what the scheme is yeah, there. Right, you just right. go knock that. And it's so new that like, you don't really know. We're just trying yeah. different shit to see right. if it works, like what works. And it, 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 you know, obviously like before the season, you're like, how is all this going right. to play out? Um, it, the kickoff thing was cool. Like there was only one kickoff return for a touchdown for the whole year. Oh, wow. Um, and that was from our team. That was kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. But it, it worked out like, you know, sometimes there were big returns, but then other times, you know, the the coverage team got down and and did good so it wasn't like it it favored one way or the other it, it made it exciting um and then the other the big rule changes outside of special teams uh with the, the scoring so there's no extra, yeah, point. extra point yeah that was so wild, you yeah. score a touchdown six you points to obviously three, right? you go one two or three okay so you go for one they put the ball on the two yard line okay if you go for two they put the ball on the five yard line and if you want to go for three they put it on the 10 yard line that's pretty wild right i kind of like that though I thought it, it was, yeah I think yeah cool. it's good it depends what side you end up on because <laughs> the first sense. game we're down <laughs> by like 15 points we're that's playing right. i remember we're that. playing aj yeah. mccarron's team yep, yep. and we're down we're by, watching it here yeah we're down yep. by 15 points and there's like 90 seconds to go i'm like already spending the bonus money on the <laughs> sideline thinking this is nice bro back yeah. playing football yeah. first game get a win um, they go down, score, then get the three points. So now it's like they they've just scored nine points. Right. I think they're it down is. by like five or six now. Yeah. Um, and then another rule change is which came to hurt us at this uh, time was instead of an onside kick, if you're down in the fourth quarter, yeah. you can elect to go for an offensive play. So what they do is they put the ball on I think the twenty five yard line, and it's fourth and fifteen. <laughs> So if you get it, yeah. keep going. And, you keep going. and if you don't get it, it's like a fourth and right. 15 play. The, they get the, the ball right, right there. there. Yeah. So they go fourth and 15. Like and Obviously, no way that they're going to drive downfield, right. get a touchdown, right. get a three-point conversion, right. and then get the fourth and 15. Right. They get the fourth and 15. <laughs> and they're like, all right, well, obviously, they're not going to drive down the field. They right. do that they touchdown. Right. Bro, it was an insane. Like, like you're just sitting on the sideline. Like, this is actually happening. A minute and a half. So yeah. real time was probably like six minutes. Right. It happened real fast because we were. It was happening here. We had the shop and everything, and I was like, "Bro, what the fuck happened?" And I'm watching like, "What the fuck is going yeah. on?" Like, this suck. These rules suck. This is terrible. <laughs> um, and then you know, as as the season went on, you're like watching other games that you're not yeah. like invested in, right, and right. it was cool, bro. Yeah. Like the overtime. Maybe tune in more. Like, yeah, it's in. just it's just more fun towards the end of the yeah. games. I think, which yeah. is exciting. kind of like a basketball game or yeah. something at the end when it's real close. Um, but uh, the overtime rule, too, the overtime was different. We had one. I think there was only two or three games go to overtime, and we had one of them. So it's basically like a penalty shootout in soccer, right? That's kind of cool. So each team gets three plays on offense, which means you get three plays on yeah, defense, yeah. too. Um, and it's just whoever gets the most. Oh, my God. So you I get three that. opportunities. Bang. You score more than the other team, you're good. So what are the points? When you get in the end zone, is it just six points? It's, it's good. Or, it's not even or, a point. It's, oh, just, it's, just, it's one, just like one. one. Yeah, gotcha, it's just gotcha. like, like one. Like penalty kicks. Exactly. Yeah, like exactly whatever. like penalty kicks. And uh, if if it's tied after three tries, bro, you keep going Wait, until happens? someone. Yeah. You keep just, going. Is it sudden death ever? Keep, like Keep just... going. No, you just keep going until someone wins. <laughs> so that was cool. We had one like that, and it came down to like the last play of the three, and, and, and we lost. Um, That's kind of cool, though. It was cool, man. So like, I, like walk off wins and stuff like that. Too. Yeah, like, man. I like, that, like yeah. I said, me being on the sideline, it was like, it was exciting. Yeah. Like games cool. super close. And you're like, that. man. Yeah. So I think I think you'll see. Obviously, the XFL and NFL did partner. Right. Um, 
So I think you may see some like, you know, it's like the guinea pig league. Right. If we think about changing the rule here, we might put it there first and see That's how it goes. Like too. they used to do in preseason. And they do it for baseball too, like with the minor leagues. You know, they yeah. try different things and then implement them in the big leagues and stuff. But yeah, I think the XFL, I think it's going to be, I'm serious. Like I kind of like saw this potential, especially with The Rock and, and his business partner, the female. That's like super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's Danny. So, yeah, yeah she's, Danny. she's awesome. Yeah. Super innovative. I see a, a big thing from sports gambling, especially if oh, they're yeah. making it like exciting and stuff like that. Yeah. I think they're going to like innovate in that space a lot. So I'm excited to see how it rolls. I think you're going to see a lot better players coming through and yeah. stuff like that. Well, that's the thing this <laughs> next year to be interesting to see because, you know, last year it being the first year, a lot of guys are watching that aren't playing exactly. thinking, man, I could probably do that. Right. You know, I heard from like some big names that aren't playing anymore. Yep. And like, if, if you get some big names like this, you know, like it, it'll be, I think pretty cool for the, for the league. But no, I think, I think it's going in the right direction, man. You know, um, I played in the AAF league in 2018 and that was a joke. <laughs> that was really, really disappointing. Yeah. Um, you know, they're selling you kind of like what the XFL is. Like it's a great opportunity to, to, you know, have another shot at your dreams. And it just wasn't that oh, at all, yeah. bro. It was a waste of time. Um, but this is completely different, bro. Yeah. The quality of football is good. The, nice. the, um, you know, all the facilities we had were a one, um, organized. Um, Love that. it's, it's, it's yeah. awesome, bro. How was it on your body? Like physically, was there, was there less contact more? I know you're old I'm now. Old, man. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. I tried to fucking throw a baseball last week and I'm like ripping everything. I'm like, damn, it sucks. No, nah, I'm good, bro. It was fine. <laughs> Everything's good. Nah, it, it was, I didn't have obviously any like, uh, Major serious major, energy yeah. i like dislocated a finger just like little dumb you know yeah. little Was specialist like going injuries. The other way? yeah little stupid specialist yeah. injuries um yeah just like back tightness and hamstrings and stuff stuff yeah. that's normal um i think i said to you now i've noticed i gotta like spend more time Dude, warming up yeah. and this and that just just because yeah. i'm getting older but um no nah, body was good bro. what about like fun. overall in the league were they like trying to like is it the, w the other way that i was thinking of it is that going to be their like safety protocol league or like if they're going to change rules about you know hitting people that stuff all that I don't yeah know. maybe yeah I, like i said i think any rule change they're going to try and put it through just here and, and yeah, see yeah, how see it how goes it goes yeah. um i know they've been trying to get kick rid of kickoff for a long time and i think it's all garbage what they're saying like I've kind of been able to peek behind the curtain on this yeah. specific topic. Yeah. Um, they say kickoff is like one of the most violent plays and it's right. It's just to do away towards. with it. It's going to be a lot safer for the players. Well, like I've seen the actual studies and that's bullshit. Really? The most dangerous plays are offensive, defensive plays for, for linemen because they're just ramming into a wall yeah, essentially. Exactly for at least 10 plays in a drive yeah. back to back to back to back to back doing that for three kickoffs hours, two hours. kickoffs one of the safer plays in it now it looks more violent because dudes are running full speed but as far as like injuries head injuries go that makes sense yeah. like the study shows it's not where it, it's not kickoff yeah. so i think the whole that whole thing was like a pr move just gotcha. just to make the public happy but because i say now i think they just changed the rule in the nfl uh for kickoffs that you can fair catch the ball now inside the 25 yard line really? and the ball goes to the 25. So it's like they're trying to do away with returns in that and league. Then, yeah. But in but the XFL, they're, they're like, yeah. they're like, no, we need you guys running yeah. balls back. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to create some Who cares about the players. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah. Oh, man. Well, that's good, man. I'm, are you ex – what's the opportunities going forward? How does it work after the season? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where is where you land on that right now? Yeah. Um, so – it's kind of it's kind of still up in the air. I I know what I know just because I've been in contact with my coaches and stuff, and and me and Hines got along really good. I I hope I'm allowed to say this without getting him in trouble. Um, but he's he basically told me that as long as he's there, I'm there, and spot, and yeah. all the coaches are there for I think three years. So yeah. he's got another two years. Um, and then yeah, whatever. Like I said, anything more that happens with yeah. that, bro, is, is just bonus. Yeah, exactly. This is bonus to me. Yeah. You know, being able to go and play in the XFL is bonus to me. So anything else that happens, um, is is just it's just extra, bro. So, I love it. so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now just preparing to go back up there next January, and, and that's kind of where my head's at. And if anything else happens in between, then it, it happens. So that's kind of where I'm at. How does it work for the NFL? So like you're just kind of in a waiting game, right? It's free agency, just yeah. like MLB and everything, right? Yep. You're just kind of like waiting just to see what jobs open up. Wait by the phone, twenty four seven, yeah. keeping on loud, and hope someone calls. And yeah, I think with the like I said, with the XFL and the NFL having a partnership um it's in everyone's contract yeah. like the basically if the nfl come calling you're allowed to go yeah because the usfl that's basically the that xfl's sense. direct competition gotcha. okay. usfl xfl they're like finding it out for the spring league i guess gotcha, gotcha. um and i think where we have a leg up is we're actually partnered, partnered with, with the NFL. NFL. They want you to succeed yeah. Yeah, versus so, like they're um, competing with the USFL. Yeah. So really it, it's it's all set up good to whereas if if the NFL does come call and they're kind of just they're promoting guys yeah. to to go. Yeah. So yeah. 
how does, uh, let me, this is important to me because I do have some younger kids that listen to this stuff, like, you know, high school, college, that kind of stuff. When you talked about Bentley, you know, making a comment about a kid at school, how does, how do you handle something like that mentally, you know, where as a dude, maybe it does get you a little bit or maybe it doesn't, but I think you're in the right place right yeah. now to kind of give that information to people to be like, nah, don't fuck. Well, the me. first thing I asked Bentley, I said, well, what does his dad do? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Like, no, no, compare me first, yeah, motherfucker. No, right. <laughs> Which I did say that, but I was yeah, joking. He yeah. knew I was joking. Um, and, and that's part of why I joked with him initially about it, because, bro, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I've had to, I was talking to someone about this the other day. Like, I've had to quiet outside noise for like 13 years. I'm not new to that. Right. You know, like, you have to do that. That's the good thing, I think, about going to a program like LSU or one of these big schools where they have a big fan base. You know, you're kind of always in the spotlight you have to learn how to quiet that noise down. And if you want to be a professional in any, in any field, I mean, that, that time's going to come where you got to learn to quiet that down. It's interesting now where it's different with Bentley. Um, it's easy when they're talking about me, right. you know, and cause I'm like, you. yeah, whatever. But like, if they're talking about him, that's when I have to really like, woo yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. But no, with him, man, I just said, look, dude, people have, people are going to talk about yeah. dad forever. Yep. Say good things, say bad things. Yep. It doesn't matter. Um, I, we use each other as examples cause we'll be sitting there watching, watching a game or uh, we'll be playing a video game and someone will do something wrong and Bentley will be like, oh, Tom Brady sucks. <laughs> and I'll be like, see, bro, you're, yeah, you're, you're a fan that doesn't know what he's talking exactly. about, right? You yeah. didn't mean what you said, right? right? So he he's kind of understanding it. Um, That's really good. But it was funny when he, he wasn't That's happy with that kid yeah, when he came exactly. home. And, oh, yeah. He said you was downgraded for the <laughs> You're like, no, let me put this in we perspective. Had a, we had a laugh about yeah, exactly, it. You know, yeah. and, and like I said, it was I, real. Yeah, it was, uh, it was funny, man, but. Yeah, he he's 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 good, man. That's he's, awesome. he's fine. I don't think he lets that stuff bother him. Good real. Well, dude, I, I'll let you get rolling. I know you got stuff going on, but dude, this was this was awesome. I always like chopping it up with you. If there's anything else that you want to talk about or leave with our um what's that? Oh yeah, yeah. I did want to bring that up, but I didn't know how to bring that up. But what's like that? <laughs> I wanted to talk about this. We talked about it in the shop and now we're on camera. So how do you get in a music video with Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj? We just need it on camera. I the answer is even crazier than the question. Okay. It's, it is a weird, uh, crazy yeah, question yeah, just yeah. to say out loud. Be like, how do you get in a music video with those two people? Nicki just DM me. Stop. I swear to God. Bro. <laughs> I swear to God. So she, um, I, guess, I guess she had, um, she lives in New York. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how she found me on Instagram, um, but she did. And then I was doing like workout videos at the time. And this, this whole scenario is why I'm a believer of manifestation. Yeah. And I have, a, I have my buddy who can witness, he, he was there. Um, so I'm sitting there, I see her follow me and I'm like, I'm sitting with my boy, I'm like, bro. She just randomly follows you one day or whatever? Yeah, it, yeah. Was, in, it, was, it was like summer sometime. Um, I was still with the Giants. Um, it was in the off season. Yeah. And so I see it and I say to my boy, I'm like, bro, the video I'm about to post tomorrow of this workout today, I was like, I'm gonna put a Nicki Minaj song and yeah. I'm like, I bet she sees it. She just yeah. followed me. Yeah. So I do that. She sees it, likes it, and comments. Oh my god! That's and the sick. comment was something like, it's "You put on, it on like like a post or a story on a post." Okay. I don't even think stories was a thing back yeah, then. That's bro. right. Yeah. It's like 2016. Yeah. So, um, and she comments. She's like, "Whatever." And then she's like, "I have a surprise for you on whatever the date was, like June 1st <laughs> or 2nd or whatever." And I'm like, "All right, here we go." Uh, long story short, that surprise was she said my name in like a Calvin yeah, Harris right. song. So Pun like, like Brad Wing or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I was like, damn, that's fire. That yeah. was crazy. Um, and we just kind of stayed in contact from that. Yeah. So anyway, fast forward to 2018. She literally messaged me on Instagram and um, <laughs> along the lines of, not word for word, but along the lines of, I need you and your boy talking about Odell yeah. um, to be in a music video. She said she needed a... A good looking black dude and a good looking white dude. And I guess we fit the bill. Let's go. I said to her, first thing I said, I said, you, you guys must have gone over budget. Man. You just need, you're just trying to find some stuff. So anyway, um, she was like, we were already in California, me and O were in LA and they're shooting in Malibu. That's nice. Um, so she sent the address. She sent the the time. So we pulled up, bro. Literally we were there like for, I don't know, we were there for no longer than an hour. Um, our, our scene was like 15 minutes of shooting and That's got great. fed, got paid, left. Like literally got fed, huh? So our, he, I was feeding. I was <laughs> oh, you were? Feeding. Okay. Yeah, yeah, That's the way yeah. it works either way. That's Ariana cool. was there. She was great. She was dating old Pete Davidson heard, at the time. Yeah, he was right. there. Uh, Nikki was obviously great. She was, she was good to work with. And, uh, so yeah. like they just like rent out a random Malibu home or something yeah, like that. Or something. It was, just do yeah, a shoot. it was yeah, big like ass house. Like you pull up, there's like semi trucks everywhere i, I mean that. huge production, yeah, it's a production bro, you know? yeah, i mean yeah. who knows what the label spends on those kind of things it's fucking nuts. um i love it but yeah it, it was cool man and then it came out and then 
yeah, it was, it's good. It's a good. <laughs> what was life like after it's that? A good like, conversation it, yeah, starter. Exactly. You know what yeah, I mean? It's, like, yeah, it's no funny, man. Yeah, that's it's, me. Yeah, I'll go to places and like my mom will throw it on the fuck on the TV. You know what I mean? Like we'll be somewhere. Look, look, look. She's like, the mom. Man. Shut up. She's the. But yeah, man. That's something. You know, it's gonna be there forever, man. It's yeah, uh, it's, cool. it's a funny piece of history, and no, it's cool. I got to do it with O, man. You know, yeah, we, it's, we've done a lot of fun shit together, and uh, it's cool that that's just gonna live on the internet forever. That's what, that's the best part. The internet is like, never gonna go. You'd be ninety good and bad, man. Like, oh, yeah, good and bad. When you got some good stuff on there, it's good. That's right. You got some bad stuff, or you got to clear it off. now? I don't know. We're kind of trying to trying to. Push put the, the good road. stuff that's on there exactly yeah, yeah. just pile the good stuff up so the small the bad stuff's look real low that's it baby good. well dude i i always enjoy chopping it up with you thank you for the time thanks for always supporting the shop and coming by for sure um i know you don't even know the magnitude of what you do but your great energy and all that man and again your journey inspires so many people so uh i thank you for that and thank you for sharing it with everybody and, and again taking the time bro thank appreciate you bro you. thanks for having me anytime bro appreciate you